Welcome to Diacast, now with 83% fewer introductions. Here on Diacast, our group of six machines in Rage play different RPGs, bringing you a new game and system every few weeks. I'm still not Lukey, because this week we're finishing up our world-building episode. James D'Amato of the One Shot Podcast is taking us through the final steps to create our Pantheon, and then we're going to dip our toes into yet another set of prompts from his new book, The Ultimate RPG Game Master's World Building Guide. Yay! So without further ado, let's get to it! How does your god communicate with mortals? This can be appearing personally, communicating through prophets, dreams, signs and wonders, or avatars. Mm. I think we know mine. (laughs) Just kind of shows up and berates people like a drunk aunt at a party. (laughs) 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 I love it. Where are the bath bombs? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So I feel I've, I've kind of worked out mine. I think it kind of depends on on how, to what extent I'm interacting. It's not sometimes kind of like some of us are chatting about. Sometimes it's as simple as that nagging temptation you get when you finish a bottle of a drink or, or you're just like, you know what, I just want to chuck this on the floor. Sometimes it's as simple as that. And maybe you're already kind of seeing some cracks on the bottle. But other times it can be very overt because, of course, I am very invested in mortals and I'm very passionate. So sometimes it can be full-on slightly supernatural like this window is cracking and uncracking in a way that like gestures and points and you can kind of hear this kind of icy voice through the, yeah through I the think. sound of cracking glass you yeah can it's make like words. Is, is that cracking and uncracking or or is it saying smash this and like yes. or whatever like mm. and it is this kind of throbbing kind of ring wraithy vibe love it going on Ooh. when Absolutely. i'm nearby love it but you also do compulsive thoughts, like when you're standing on a bridge and you're like, I should throw my phone in the river. Yeah, like that is also me. But then, <laughs> you know, your phone happens. screen might suddenly be appear to be cracked. Mm-hmm. If, like, you no, know, if it's actually no. me rather than just your kind of your chemicals playing up. My phone screen is already cracked, Matt. <laughs> well, that's what you think, but it was actually me. <laughs> okay, well, then you owe me a new phone. <laughs> I'm a god, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, he's got me down. <laughs> I think I'm going to go for avatars. Yes! Nice. Ooh. Ooh, what are they like? So, <laughs> kind of... <laughs> they're great. Thank you for asking. I'm going to go for beasts Tell me about the your babies. So, they're beasts. Yes. And I'm not sure what. I think it's going to be whatever is, like, hanging around at the time. I kind of possess yeah. it. Forest so, it could just be, like, a little cute squirrel that it has, like, a deep voice of, leave my forest. Oh, <laughs> like, a really terrifying boar. Love like, that. just... Come, you know, so it varies, but I kind of yeah use the forest as my avatar, but I use the living, like moving mammals and lizards and birds. Does it have to be alive, or could you be like roasting a rabbit on a fire and it turns oh. its head to you? Oh, get that's out of here! Horrible! Leave I now. love it. <laughs> Hell Leave yes. this place. I think not the plants. I don't <laughs> and want more like, salt trees. And now it's time okay. to put away the garlic and put on the running shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's terrifying. Okay, yeah, definitely. Yep. As you leave, remove your shoes and run as a beast. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. On all fours. All fours. Down. (laughs) Down. You can get lower. Good (laughs) person. Very good. Get low, low. Um, I'm going to go for... um, Well, my communication is I often don't. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> I just I, I, I just judge do the thing and move on the very much so yeah oh my god and then go um, <laughs> you know you're being communicated to because you fell over <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> when you recover from the concussion um, the uh, that said I because I am invested in this this anomaly um, I will take a more ordered uh, take a more ordered uh, manner of communication uh, that said, so I will manipulate local gravity, and this is why I'm called the Dolman's Dance. I will make like 
I will create swirls and shapes and the like by manipulating orbits oh. and of like you know nice. pebbles or like in um a a priest can invoke me and say like throw leaves up into the air and i'll yeah do yeah. stuff with them they light a campfire and the smoke starts coming back down mm. in an but arc. it's like because no, it because it's gravity rather than the wind and i want yeah. to because i'm kind of starting to steer into that but it's nice. like yeah it's like yeah plants will like dip and and rise and stuff like this i love mm-hmm. the idea of there being a very sort of complicated methodology for interpreting what different orbits mean you know what's the angle what's the speed what, what like orientation and even the whole dance thing it's just people go in a procession and their steps will have different weight at different points <sighs> mm-hmm. that's great that's nice i just busted ankles yes. oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> You got followers who are turning up with all this like scientific equipment. They got spirit levels and, and it's all light as a feather. Scales <laughs> <Yes>. and astrolabes <laughs> and come from, like <laughs> desperately trying to measure things and taking readings. And others who are just like, I'm here to groove. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I like it. Mm. I would like to communicate through dreams. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Are you Good. that dream where you're falling and you nearly die? I'm that dream where you're just walking up the stairs and walking oh. up the stairs <laughs> and walking up the stairs <laughs> and walking up the stairs and you're walking up dream. the stairs I and you don't it. know where the stairs end but you're just going higher and higher and higher and sooner or later you're going to fall <laughs> and then you wake up with a feeling in your stomach. Oh, mm. Good. Ooh. Man. It's amazing. I love the idea love of you it. just having like actual machinations like that's where it lives is you communicate through dreams and influence through dreams you're the god of that sure but like i got a lot of stuff other going on as well so i'm very passionate but i'm not great at communicating so the step thing is like your hyper fixation that's like a nightmare dating profile i'm very passionate but i'm bad at communication (laughs) and it's like that explains a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that rules. Uh, Peter. I have a feeling that if there is any holy order around this god, it's basically done by process of what are they against? So they've sort of ticked off the things that they don't seem to be agreeing with. Because I can't quite decide. Are they the god of debate in the way of they want a certain thing to happen? Or they're just really invested in the whole process. They want the process to be. I think it's the process. I yeah. think process. as well. It's like Ares just wants war. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. always yeah, care who wins. He doesn't care who wins. Yeah. yeah. So they are the process of it. So I think they would communicate. Uh, to, to be honest, I wrote down communicate, then I just kept writing the word arbiter, and I can't, don't know mm. why. <laughs> <laughs> I like arbiter. I think they have some sort of mortal avatars. Yeah, you know, like you sometimes like this. This might be a bit left field, mm. but like whenever you're having like a, a, like a, a serious debate amongst like a group of people, and like there's two people who are really laying into it. Mm. And everyone else is listening. The moment you know someone has won is when the crowd turns, right? And the crowd <laughs> kind of starts going, yeah, that guy. Mm. And yeah. so maybe there's kind of this kind of... But you never know who starts it. You know, That's kind yeah. of the beauty of crowd logic is you never know which one person starts to go, yeah, it's always a crowd. And so you communicate by you're always the one who, who, who kind of decides the victor. You're the mm. one who kind of gently steers the crowd. But no one ever really knows who that is in the crowd. You can't point and to a at face. the same time, the one to quell the crowd if things get violent, because that's that's not what we're about. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of communicate through crowds of individuals that are kind of your avatars, but they each are individuals with lives and peep and personalities. But yeah, you, you kind just of you ever so them. slightly mildly possess them. Yeah, exactly. Right. Mild, mild. They won't notice. Yeah, so they they communicate through sort of crowd and onlookers. I like that. Maybe it is a particular, very sort of upper crust, posh voice that is yeah. just like, mm. that's oh foul, yes, you know. Yeah, there's always one guy who's like, I think, I think that man's right. Yeah. <laughs> Jolly good. Here, here. By Jove, yeah. I good think show. he's got it. Good Jolly good show. <laughs> and when this goes to the natural world, I quite like quite like the idea that there's like I don't know two robins having at each other on a couple <laughs> mm-hmm. branches, and then just a thrush will go. <laughs> yep. <Go on. laughs> yeah. Uh, so that leaves us with the last question I want to ask before we figure out what your following is, and then I think we'll jump ahead to uh, uh, the D twenty to finish out. Nice. The last question that I'm going to ask is: How does this god prefer to be worshipped? Oh yes. 
Good question. Is someone drilling, by yeah, the way? Yeah, they are good noise. doing some important construction oh, in my no. home. I am so sorry about that. That's, oh, that's right. okay. I should have asked going insane. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, are there a lot of trains going past? <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Live by the Welcome train to Chicago, anymore. city of trains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they boy. won't let us have trains anywhere else in America. This is where we have them. <laughs> They're get all sad here. When I remember America doesn't have trains. It, it's yeah. so weird that they don't have trains. It would make so much sense. It makes they have yeah. the no sense that we don't have trains. It really, really makes no sense that we don't have trains, and it frustrates well, me no, every it's, day. Well, no, it's it's. Yeah, that is. again, it's a, a capitalist nightmare system. <laughs> yep, is but why. but we <laughs> but capitalist nightmare people used to be train barons. We used to be really good at still <laughs> building yeah, trains, really. but, but they, also they, being they, very they, bad. They, well, but then you got Henry Ford. <laughs> And yeah. then they realised if we keep building trains, people will start travelling on them and then we can't sell them cars. And also, they ran out of trains in the train mines. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. They tried to train some more. It didn't work. Oh. Hey. Sorry. Trains don't Most go on Most trains trees. in the United States live in captivity. There are very few wild trains still left roaming our prairies. <laughs> yeah. How sad. Yeah. For just a couple of zillion bucks a month, you can mm. adopt yeah. one and make sure that it's well stoked. <laughs> What were we actually doing? Following, no, yeah. right? How do you, Following. Well, no, it is how cool. do you prefer to be worshipped? Assuming you have a follower, doesn't even need to be a follower. Like, if someone encounters you, if they give you an offering yeah. or something, this is how do you prefer mm. worship? I have an answer. Go, go, go. My preferred form of worship is a giggle. <laughs> oh. I love oh, it. You miss good. the step, you get a feeling in your stomach, and you giggle. <laughs> And if you giggle, that is my preferred form of worship. If you groan, you just... I'm like, oh, dishonor on oh, you. wow. Your entire <laughs> deal is just trying to cheer people up a bit before they go to bed. That is your exactly. entire deal. Make, make them and I feel love a bit foolish, but they're okay with it. Yeah, if you've got a sleepy yeah. head and you've had a bad day, I just want to make you laugh a little bit. So my followers know to giggle. There are no bungalows. <laughs> There must be stairs. Even in the one story ones, they still have a little staircase. Yep. Little, yeah. Still have a little, little staircase. staircase. All you need yeah. is a step stool. Amazing. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah, nice. This is the worshipping staircase. I yeah. like that because it kind of changes the vibe of your character, Helen, in quite a cool way. I was kind of seeing it as like kind of, it doesn't necessarily have Creepy. a goal, but it's like I'm in the presence of something supernatural, which, you know, in, in IRL world, you'd be a bit spooked. Whereas that kind of changes it as like, oh, you know, like it wasn't just me missing a step. That was the presence of the step god. Misstep. I'll ch I'll giggle because I'll, like that's what yeah. like and that kind of it's a positive thing it's like good luck almost. Wait until we get to following because like it could turn mm. out that misstep just has the largest most devoted following out of the <laughs> yeah. year, I bet which they would do. be wild to me um, <laughs> but let's, I, I would be behind let's that. get this on the ground i just love the idea of this like we've established these very like pristine very ordered um courtiers in the heart of the crown's court, missing a step, like at the top of the tower, and just having to go hee hee hee. <laughs> <laughs> most, <laughs> most reluctant. They're allowed to laugh. Hee mm. <laughs> hee hee. We make very sober jokes, don't you know? Sensible chuckles <laughs> only. Ho, 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 ho. All right, I, I've got how I prefer to be worshipped. Again, it kind of writes itself. It's like the obvious is I like I like you to smash things. I like you to destroy something. <laughs> yeah. In, in as passionate a way as possible. So I think if somebody's about their business and they believe I'm present, if they wish to kind of either placate me or to kind of give in to me, because I think there's definitely a side of old splinter glass, which is like, if you play with me and you get on my program, I can help you. Yeah. It's kind of, it's like, if you kind of give in to the berserk rage and really impress me, I'll help you somehow. So I think, yeah, whether you want to kind of earn my good graces, either to avoid me or to get my help, I think you want to trash something. I think the more valuable the item and value here means the longer and more difficult it was to create the better i like it being smashed yeah. and that can be conceptual as well it could be a ming vase or it could be your best friend's wedding basically i like things being ruined no one invites your followers to their weddings well but perhaps i'm there anyway and then you have to placate me <laughs> otherwise i will i worm my way in that's why you smash bottles and glasses yeah. and things when you're like setting up a ship so the ship doesn't crash but this the is a weird goes. It's a weird kind of amalgamation of the real world and this fictional world we've created. But you know, like the Viking Thor thing where you finish a glass and you're yeah. like, good, another. 
and you smash it. Yeah. In this world, is that a ritual? It's like we're doing yeah. that just yeah. to make sure that we have a good evening. To yeah. Make sure <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The glasses yeah. I imagine it. before like a lot of like fancy events, you have to do something to. Oh yeah. To make sure you don't ruin your night. Yeah. 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 So you have to break something of value. But not to, like, like super valuable. Him. Yeah. It's like a ritual yeah. thing. Yeah. You make a burner cake yeah. for every wedding. You make a burner. <laughs> yeah, cake. yeah. 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 <laughs> Chakorsia has to go and take a sledgehammer too, or something. Yeah. Yes. And it's like it's make very... a fake wedding dress and you just set it on. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just, 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 just have fun with this one, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's got to matter, so maybe they make a bake and make it, don't tell them which one they've got to smash. Yeah. And then the poor oh. person who's decorated the cake is like, I'm destroying Yeah. <laughs> the... I think it's very you much my, my dealer's catharsis, so like, if you're smashing it, just ritually going... Psh- is not good enough. I kind of no. want you to. They have to, to enjoy it, don't they? Yeah. yeah, and so you can't. Um, you're not pouring a libation. You are. Yeah, well, like, yeah. Just not, like pouring a libation is a way to resist me, but it won't help. There me. are flower girls at weddings. There are cake pushers at weddings in this world, where yeah. you, you like get the cutest <laughs> kid, and it's like, okay, hun, you get to push the cake over. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, and it, that's a really good angle. I bet I'm so popular with kids. You're so popular. <laughs> that's oh, really God, interesting. They get angle. to like just dive into this cake. Yeah. And like yeah. roll around in icing. Yeah, and they do that at weddings because it placates yeah. this god and the kid has a great yeah. time. Like Yeah, keeps the children everyone occupied. Wins. It's Charlie, cute. it's your turn to utterly ruin the volivants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you've you've kind of created the god of punk rock. A little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Just the god of watch pitch. Yeah. Oh my god. Because he's de- he's definitely there when people, you know, smash their guitars to pieces. His favourite band is Black Flag. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, I'm going to localise uh, worship again. So, uh, like, you can invoke this god by um, just throwing something up into the air, putting ah. it at the mercy, or like a, a, a trinket or a coin or something. It's like flip a coin, and if it doesn't come back down again, that means I'm there. Oh, that's good. Um, mm. And uh, that's like just the the on the way, but the bulk of worship takes place around this anomaly. An anomaly. Wow. And <laughs> well done. Uh, the central feature is it. It is leaping. It is this like ecstatic bounding. Oh, you, yes. you, you throw yourself to the mercy of gravity. That's good. Nice. And it might be that there are like if we've got this idea that I've got kind of like orbiting moats around this thing. There might be even it's basically it's a religious parkour course. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. I I'm a fan. Yeah, of But if guy. I don't like you, I'll make you wipe out thirty feet in the air. Yeah. Just. <laughs> good stuff. Hello. Hi. Hello. For the consequence of intellect, I have two things. When you're starting a debate or debating and you probably realise there's a presence, uh, they're worshipped quite a lot through gesture Hmm. and stuff like keeping both your hands above the table and keeping your hands in sight. So you have to debate physically, also showing you've got nothing in them. Nice. So you can't have your hands under the table on a sword, a knife, a spoon. Deadly spoons. Deadly spoons. Or also they just like to be worshipped by like literally a good debate. So Hmm. they do not like interruptions. Maybe that's how they're very spiteful. It's if you find yourself interrupting, you find yourself like losing a sentence quite literally. <laughs> and they do not like foul play of any kind. Yeah. So yeah. they're worshipped by the thing they are the god of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got to be worshipped by like following the process and whatnot. And so very much like people probably don't worship you from afar beyond maybe reading yeah. and learning rules. I like that. I think that's good. So I'm going to go simple again because I'm just going very physical and bestial with this god, I think. I need you to leave me a small offering and I would like it to be an eye or a tooth. Ooh. Traditional. Ooh. That's not a big ask. That's not yeah. a big ask. It doesn't have to be a human eye or tooth. <laughs> no, no, no. It could be something else. You've got two eyes and goodness knows how many. Precisely. <laughs> you don't have to be yours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you don't bring an offering into the woods and you go out alone and you don't, you haven't brought like an, a rabbit or something with you with a two for an yeah. eye to spare, you might incur the god's wrath. So become you prepared. you can't use one that you got in the woods. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You must <laughs> bring it with you. Oh. Woods today, you better bring extra eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. What about you, Nikki? Laurel, the heart of the crown, likes to be worshipped by being obeyed, <laughs> by having yes. their edicts yep. obeyed, and by literally being worshipped. <laughs> yeah, fair. The they are twist. worthy Ooh. of worship. People should bow when they see them, and they should bring them whatever they want, and they should ask for their favours. Fair. So Laurel should be worshipped the way that my cat thinks she should be worshipped. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, sorry, the way your cat knows she should be worshipped. <laughs> Love it. Love this. <laughs> All right, folks, we are in the home stride. 
I need you to add your power, interest, and passion together. Okay, do hang on, maths, right? Nine. My cat's just sat Nine. on it. Nine. So yours is cat. Yeah, mine is black fur. Uh, no, but I think they were all two, so that's a six for me. I've got a seven. I'm on a ten. I'm on an eleven. Okay, now everyone take a d6 and roll it. Yes. Ooh. Now, the number that you added together out of your stats, that is the faith oh. of your oh my whole goodness. deal, of your religion uh, for, for what it is. And that will allow you to adjust the results of the three die rolls that you're going to do, of which you've done one so far. And those die rolls and uh, how you influence it up or down with faith is going to determine the loyalty, influence, and size of your following. Ooh. So loyalty is, you know, this is how loyal your worshippers are, how seriously they take worship of you. So based on your D6 role and based on your vision for your God, decide whether you want to use any faith to influence it up or down. To give you an idea, like when we think of Terry Pratchett, Luck is a goddess in uh, the world of Discworld who is essentially worshipped by everyone now that isn't always like a concentrated worship it's just everybody kind of believes in luck and therefore the size of her following is infinite if there's a thinking being it believes in luck so think of that like in loyalty maybe no one takes you seriously like a level one for loyalty is this god is a bit of a joke their name might appear in pop culture as something people appreciate but not respect so think about that Results for these rolls can go up to 10 and you have, you know, whatever faith you have now and uh, die roll for the other two. So now roll your die again for influence and decide whether you want to adjust it up or down using your faith. So you basically are spending your faith to boost or reduce. Yeah, exactly. And difference between influence and size is kind of just... So influence is the influence that your following has on the world at large. You know, a really influential, like when we start to get up to like seven or eight range, that's like the Catholic Church. Wow. You know, they're a huge wow. church. Okay. They steer world events and whatnot. If we're in the lower ranges, even hinting that you follow this God loses you respect in both the mortal and divine Ooh. realm. Any worshippers must keep their faith a secret to function in society. So influence can go all the way around the other way to where being a worshipper of this God ruins your reputation. <laughs> okay. And then finally, size Roll the d6 and decide how you want to use your faith. It's okay to have leftover faith. We just want to have an element of randomness because, like, if you are a small-time god and you roll very high, it is extremely fun to justify. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, just thinking that. Yeah, I've got some interesting ones here. <laughs> I was like, I had a six. Where do I put that if it's size? That's hilarious because I'm literally just one forest. <laughs> but it's a very, a very size. Mm-hmm. But it's the forest. It's the most important forest. There are mm. globally yeah. important yeah. tiny locations. So we can add as much of our faith to any of these as we like. Yep, exactly. Or subtract. Uh, Use your faith to subtract from any of those results as you like, too. (laughs) Okay, I think I've decided. So I have loyalty at eight. So my followers are borderline fanatics. Very serious about this. Yeah. Worshippers within this god's church are fanatical and willing to place their lives on the line in the name of their deity. Most of them only have one eye left. Mm -hmm. And my influence (laughs) is three, so not super wide range. Okay. There is an organized religion of sorts, but it exists mostly conceptually. With great effort, the faithful can accomplish small things. That sounds about right. Yeah, I was hoping it would kind of stay small scale and like they're struggling because this is not a fashionable thing, I think, to worship this forest. (laughs) kind of like druidic yeah you've got like yeah. druids mm-hmm. yeah exactly <laughs> and i kind of think it's not even that they have one eye it's that most of your followers are blind oh yeah have no teeth of course. you just have faith in the forest and the forest provides for you oh my god yeah none of them need to see because you guide them yes yeah Ooh. Ooh, so spooky, That's so spooky. Ooh, they all I have like it. animal companions that are avatars of you oh my god they have like guide boars <laughs> H-, <laughs> H-, H-, H i have a very important question when you are given an eye does it appear on the banyan tree yeah. is it just like a banyan tree full of cool eyes and teeth 
Yeah, I was thinking my physical form was going to be kind of like a banyan tree, but I literally wrote down covered in eyes and teeth and fur. Yes! Wow. Oh my okay. god! <laughs> so creepy! It'll lift and there'll be like several eyes and different colours and sizes feel... and like different animals. So so not even oh, like how no, when no, you get like no. a knot on a tree, it can look like an eye. Just no. like a literal Literal eyes, they'll like be <laughs> blinking at you. I feel it's the like, eye tree. it's simple. Like when you go and you meet this god, you see the eyes and if you see the teeth, it's too late. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Look them in the eye. Hope you don't <laughs> see anything else. Its bite is worse than its bark. Mm-hmm. Oh, ha, ha. Size three. All right. There is a small and dedicated group of followers loyal to this god in their domain. That makes total sense. Perfect. What a... Ooh, so perfect. Lovely. I love everything about that. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I love this. This I is very that. D&D somehow. Yeah, I've got the most done, D&D almost. Well. <laughs> I've gone wackadoodle with mine. <laughs> Excellent. Let's hear it, Peter. <laughs> Peter, thank tell you. Us, tell thank us. you. <laughs> Loyalty, five. Five. Okay. There are multiple sects in this god's name, but they have deep seated disagreements over how to interpret the god's name. <laughs> oh, oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! I, I would like to say I have not seen the document this is this is written from beforehand. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that was a shot in the dark. You just called that shot. I know, shot in the dark yeah. and a bullseye, which considering uh, H's banyan wood is somewhat easy. Do not take trick shots at the banyan tree. <laughs> <Do not. laughs> so influence two. Two. The most followers of this god could accomplish is writing a strongly worded letter, which feels so <laughs> right. <laughs> it's painful so how good that is and it's the thing yeah. like no matter what you say for size like with the result of loyalty this could be an enormous religion with like temples everywhere but like the bureaucratic <laughs> and diplomatic process within that place means they can't do anything oh, yes. <laughs> that's why i've gone with like, size 10 yes! Yes! Like, yes! 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 It's like okay. this enormous expanding MLM. <laughs> oh my god. Every being in every place across the mortal and divine realm worships this god in some capacity. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. It's like you might be a spooky tree or whatever, but if you accidentally get in an argument and suddenly it seems like a being is intently paying more attention to the normal. It's like, oh, I'm in a debate. <laughs> I must gesture with my leaves now. <laughs> oh Keep everything goodness. above table. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love Gosh. the consequence oh, of intellect. So amazing. Uh, Jacob, what about you? For loyalty, I've gone for seven. Seven. Ooh. Almost every worshipper within the church has a genuine dedication to this god and their domain. Mm-hmm. Yep. So there will be disagreements. Like again, because their primary form of communication is interpretation, there will be disagreements. But of course, yeah. But like the thing that that drives at is that they're not disagreements because of political power within the church. They're disagreements based on a fundamental will to understand what you want. From them. Yeah, I've gone for a size of four. Four? All right, four is uh, and for size, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, this this is a single and modest congregation dedicated to this god. So cool. it's just the one kind of like group of people. But I've gone for an influence of eight. Eight. Oh, oh. this church is a dominant cultural force. It commands nations on uh, the strength of staggering resources. So. I kind of think this kingdom, wherever we are, they're extremely concerned with the anomaly, but the members of this church are like behind the scenes serving the yeah, anomaly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm very much going for kind of an Oracle of Delphi yes, vibe. Yes, so it's yeah. a small oh, organization. Yeah. yeah. And like really oh. elite because you have to be you have to be able to like understand the, the dance. Yeah. You want to be in their orbit. Yep. <laughs> That's like hey. this wacky collection of like wizards and monks. Absolutely. Who are like they either do the maths or they do the dance. <laughs> really hardcore knees. <laughs> <Go on. Yeah. laughs> they get through a lot of ankles. It's a really, really good orthopedic surgeons in this yeah. part. <laughs> <laughs> Lukey, I am very curious about your results yeah. here. So here's <laughs> Oh no. I'm so Keep it together. Sorry. Keep it together. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I'm a guest. And you sneeze? You no, sneeze in my sneeze. presence? I'm apologizing for <laughs> that. <to say>. Okay. <laughs> my loyalty is a 10. <laughs> yes! 
<laughs> well, you're so annoying. You kind of have to be. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, I rolled a well, two, but I was like, no, this will not do. <laughs> all your kings are simps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all worshippers have internalized their dedication to this god so deeply that their every action is thoughtlessly bound to its desire. Oh my god. They aren't forced to worship. They are an act of worship. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> wow. Your yep. kingdom. Dance, my puppets, dance! <laughs> Jesus. I really hope that your setting does not have like Twitch streaming uh, or any equivalent like that uh <laughs> podcasting it feels like it could be very dangerous uh this god does feel like it could operate goop magazine yeah. <laughs> it does, doesn't it um, yeah in this world she would be gwyneth paltrow mm-hmm. yeah gwyneth paltrow with antlers is an interesting visual and do we know that gwyneth yeah. paltrow doesn't have i mean i've never met her just be so... photoshopping right. the photoshopping science has never been mm. clear on <laughs> yeah. uh, what what about influence five five so once again, yeah, this church is modest. They can build temples. They can make congregations and mostly worship unmolested. It feels like you've got a functional kingdom. It, ma- it makes sense because I don't want influence outside of this family that I care about a lot. Yeah. I'm like, no, this is my kingdom. I'm good. Uh, and then size, I have six. Six. Okay. Uh, there are enough followers of this god to found a small nation. Bam. Shot in the dark. <laughs> there we Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Yeah. Hitting yeah. that bullseye. Sight unseen, Calling baby. it. <laughs> that is, folks, the design of this game is speaking for itself. Yeah. Uh, clearly, people are getting exactly what they want out Sometimes of this. Sometimes there uh, is true magic in the dice. All right. Matt. Okay. So it's the first time in my life I actually rolled rather well. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, wow. Cool wow. for this god. That's yeah, very cool. So loyalty is also a 10. Ooh. Okay. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Which makes sense. Oh, like, god. people who have decided to worship this god are just, like, kind of berserker punks, yeah. you know? Yeah. And everything they do. Once you've started down this path and you're like, right, I worship the splinter glass rather than just I'm afraid of it or I occasionally <laughs> give in. I worship it. There's no coming back from yeah. that. I think that's like... Yeah, just Mayanads. You've literally yeah. burned all your bridges. Yeah, that is hey. proper Mayanads back. Because it's stuff. fun! Have you ever it's burned so a fun. bridge? It's so much fun to burn a bridge, guys! Yeah. Have you tried, like, smashing well, everything burn, burn that somebody loves bridge. just because it's fun? Like, yeah, it is... Fun. Those bridges that go up, they're already in half already. You just take an axe and they fall. <laughs> yeah, right. And then influence, I got five. Ooh, okay. Uh, so it's the same as me. Mm-hmm. I'll change the wording <laughs> for you. This church is modest. They can destroy temples, <laughs> <laughs> disband congregations. And... Every time I erect a temple. Like, yeah, I all rolled weirdly. I ended up almost exactly the same as you, Luki, which again kind of lends to this kind of weird, like, back and forth between the two of yeah. us. Yeah. Will yeah, they want sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you build a they temple, will. I they destroy have. it. Like, simple. They have. <laughs> You give an offering, I eat it and or destroy it. Hey. Yeah. This is w- one of my favorite character archetypes. Uh, these two are divorced and they were never married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, literally. Yeah. And then last one, size. I got seven on size. Ooh. Oh, what you're bigger than There are bitch. enough followers of this god to populate a large nation. Oh, so no. clearly you are not localized no. to this area. Nice. You are all over the world, definitely. But I think that is spread out all over the world. So it's not like... There is a nation of grungy yeah. punks just breaking everything because <laughs> that wouldn't work. There is an appreciable number of these punks kind of. Yeah, everywhere. it's like a wacky yeah. following that's grown up at some point and is now spread as a movement <laughs> all over the place as a constant thorn in the side of like organized society. I love it. I love it. There we it. go. I've had a I've had a thought. You've created a god who's kind of perfect for bonfire night. Burn things yeah, for me. So maybe before the harvest, to stop you from making people burn down the entire harvest, we preserve the offcuts from the year before, and we have like a bonfire where yeah. we burn all of those and we oh. celebrate. I have an idea, go, folks. Go, go, go. Oh, 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 oh. What if you have a harvest festival where you judge the best gourds and you know whatever, yes. and then you break them all? Oh. Oh. No one... Yes, love it. And that allows the rest of the crops to, to go on unmolested, which is great. Yes. I was going to say, also, if we want to burn an effigy, Lukey. Yes. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I was going to say, we have like a scarecrow level. contest and we burn the best scarecrows. All scarecrows have And antlers. there's a debate. There's always a debate about what's the best. Yeah, very healthy debate. And also, for some yeah. reason, the gourds are involved. They're having their own internal debate with one another. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
All right. All right. I have to know <laughs> Helen's. I have to know. I am. Yeah. I've been yeah, burning Helen's with curiosity us. this whole time. My loyalty is five. Five. Nice. Okay. Yeah, multiple sects in this god's name have deep-seated disagreements over how to interpret its will, which kind of cool. <laughs> Makes out. sense, because it communicates yeah. by giving you weird dreams. Yep. Yeah, sounds good. It's basically all the people that stayed up late after they took the step. They were like, but what does it mean? All those people <laughs> who stayed up late at night wondering what it meant eventually formed sects. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> My influence is six. Six. Oh, uh, this church has access to resources to provide support to followers just about anywhere, either from the pooled resources of a large community or from the spent resources of a few wealthy followers. Therapy. <laughs> Stubbed toes. I, I'm really curious about this. Is it that there is a weird cult that is kind of like almost like the the gravity druids for lack of a better term are you just this other weird element where you have some very wealthy people who try to like maybe they wrote a self-help book on like <laughs> your path to success is understanding the weird dreams of this specific god of misstep <laughs> i can see that but yep. my size is nine. Oh my oh, goodness shit. <gasps> Everyone knows about you. I mean, there's a lot of stairs in the world. True, so, like, very there's a true. lot of stairs. Worship for this god has more presence in heaven than it does in the mortal realm, which means you are <laughs> oh big God. amongst gods. That stairway to heaven is. <laughs> <laughs> that explains why your why followers can find resources everywhere. Is literally gods interpret their dreams that you give them. And you use that to, like, use other gods' power to express your will about the world. You are playing six-dimensional chess! This is amazing! I love the idea that you're actually, like, the strongest god and only care about this one In god. the words of Luki, dance, puppets, dance! Dance! <laughs> I love this. There are stairs on the banyan tree. Uh... <laughs> I just love the idea that, like, in this world, Led Zeppelin are like a bunch of prophets. (laughs) Not in this world? (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's cool. Oh my god. To conclude our time together, because we did say we wanted to make this setting a skosh punk, at a sousant of punk. Mm. A sousant. Just I'm in. Sprinkle a little. I would like each of you to roll a d20. I'm going to give you a question prompt that is designed around creating punk dynamics for settings, and we'll just nice. impose it on this delightful world. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm very excited. Excellent. So I got a 10. 10 is what event do the oppressors wish they could make everyone forget? Um, So an important thing about punk settings is there is a very specific dynamic that makes something punk. You know, when we think of steampunk and cyberpunk, what we don't want to lose is the dynamic of there being a class of oppressors, a class of the oppressed who the oppressors exert their power over, and punks who resist the power of the oppressors. Yeah. If you don't have that, you're just people in very attractive jackets. You're not actually doing (laughs) punk. Hell yes. You got a rage against the machine. Cool. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is just encapsulated in Matt's God versus Luki's God. My children, my children. God is not the machine. I object. Oh, are you sure? Your God is. You the sound machine. very much like the machine. I refuse to be the man. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, you're not. You you're Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to be Gwyneth Paltrow. There's your episode title. <laughs> <laughs> All right, H, give us an answer. Oh, this is hard. I'm trying to think of like a, a big event. My brain went plague and I was like, too soon. <laughs> Will it ever not be? I'm going to go for like a big natural disaster, but then they handled it like super badly and were like, yeah, no, we couldn't help anyone. Like we knew there was going to be a flood. We just thought we wouldn't say anything. What, some of you may die, but Something it's a tragedy. like that, exactly. Like, yeah. I realize you're coming from the UK, but as an American, that's gotten very close to home. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they yeah. still, yeah. Okay. still okay. too soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're, in our we're... defense, you have a lot of them. <laughs> you are bigger. 
We yeah, had a whole plan. Or something. The last like, guy are... wrote up a plan specifically for this problem. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. Uh, we just funded our pandemic department about two months before. Yeah. 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 We have a machine as well. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, okay, so, okay. so natural disaster that was handled I, yeah, I like super that. badly. I like yeah. that. Are we going to name the natural disaster? Ooh, name the natural disaster. I'm going to go for so it's not like a flood or like a fire. Or something. I'm going to go for like earthquake maybe. Ooh. Cool. And maybe it was caused by something like the man was doing. Rather than it being something like, you know, natural. Because we've mm. spent this whole time making gods, do we want it to be something more supernatural? Like the overthrowing of a specific power? Or what if a god died? Yeah. yeah. The seventh god. Brutal. The okay. So maybe aside. the god dying caused natural disaster and they're trying yeah. to cover it up and say it's yeah. just an earthquake. Just an earthquake. And actually, it was the god of granite specifically <laughs> who was like completely. And then all destroyed. the granite yeah. in the world vanished. <laughs> and loads of land collapsed. And yeah. it's something that the man had done yeah. to like get rid of the god because he was, you know, the god was in their way of progress. Something like that. My god has some yeah. This needs a bit more development. But, yeah. Oh, what if we like mined too much granite to build <laughs> yeah. like your your that, Uber yeah. palace. a palace or a yeah. temple? Yeah. 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 Got, yeah. yeah. We built our palace out of granite and we killed a god and we're not going to do that. You tore its heart out. Or even like trying to like gain its power because your kingdom is ruled quite literally by a god. Yep. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe giving them a little bit more power or yep. either they demanded power or something like that. Sounds good. So yeah, that's And go then we had to fight in granite. the debating ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I won! And you took their power. You have it in the palace. We have a granite crown now. There you go. Congratulations. I love it. <laughs> uh, Peter? I rolled a 13. 13 is going to be, how do punks keep themselves safe in this setting? Ooh. Well, to be happily anti-establishment, you have a god You you have a god on your side. Hello. Your desecrations are also consecrations. Oh, so you, like, break something important enough and it's like armor if you're smashing stuff that's dangerous because people can attack you but if you smash something important and big enough mm. you earn divine protection it's like a kind yeah. of you just yes. you break a bridge and people can't cross the entire river yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. so whilst that might be if we want to take this setting magical it's like, it's like literally you smash something and the dust comes up almost like a, like a shroud mm. or or if it's not it's just things start being yeah. in the right place for you <laughs> The rush of people exiting a place where a statue is coming down means that the pe- the, the police with big, big heavy sticks means that they can't get through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I love it. That's great. Jacob. It's a 12. 12 is going to be, does anyone live outside the system of oppression? If so, who? Ooh. Forest. <laughs> <laughs> well... I quite like the idea that there are scattered remnants. Potentially, the Beast of the Banyan is yeah. testament to one of those. That you're just kind of outside the system. Yeah. yeah. If you want to give up both of your eyes and all your teeth, there's a place you can live. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So there are like that's the one that is local to us, and oh. maybe even to extent that's that's kind of what the um, that's kind of what's going on with dancers as well, because they have such specialized knowledge. Yeah. Mm. I kind of think that like in the fallout of whatever disaster that's got to be where the anomaly oh of course kind of oh yes mm. oh you were born oh, yes. from granite daddy <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh getting very broken earth nk jemison here we killed father earth yeah 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 and you are what's left you're the result yeah. of a dead world yeah mm. it's cool it's very it's cool. It. it's cool it's cool lukey lukey oh lukey that's me it is it is four a four mm. what dangerous luxury exists in this world Ooh. Ooh. oh that's such a good question for you <laughs> It's got to be something from the forest because mm. taking something from the forest is. I'm sorry, H. No, no, I love <laughs> I said it, it was I dangerous. It. It's so dangerous. It's got to be like some particular animal fur or something, or maybe a fruit. It feels more folkloric to go for a fruit. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a good caveat to throw on this it's not just attaining it that's dangerous. I think Having it. enjoying Having it should it. also be dangerous. So maybe it has some properties. There's something about it. It's addictive or. Yeah. Oh, God. It's, a, it's like a fruit and you distill it. And you turn it into a truck. And it allows you to see clearly, ironically, for a sect devoted like, by blind people. <laughs> it kind of gives you some kind of... I don't, I don't mean that literally. I mean, like... There's yeah, a like, the, the, your followers use it sometimes. Yeah. And they just eat the fruit because that's, you know, that's the purest way of doing it. But when it comes into the city and the rich, fancy people have it, you distill it down into... Oh, they've put it in alcohol, don't they? Of course they do as well. Yeah. Of what course are you going to say, do. Peter? I was going to say an eyelash from the banyan tree. Oh! Oh! 
Holy shit! Oh, that made me cross my legs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my it's, god! It's very yes. creepy. Or like, so basically, these are like wooden eyelashes that form, and if you sort of break one off and you yeah. take the sap yeah. out, it would be. Also, I can now you feel my You get the sap skin. out of it, and you you either drink it as it is, or you I don't know, you dry it down into a powder and snort it. <laughs> I like yeah, that. I love that appropriating the sacred rite of like these forest mm. people uh, for like the benefit of of the rich and yeah. powerful feels very on brand oh, for yeah. punk that's yeah. what we're yeah. going and benefit yeah. like recreation as well it's not even medical or particularly it's helpful it's decadent. recreational yeah. it's just so decadent and capitalistic yeah. yeah yeah i feel like when the forest druids do it it allows them to like feel one with the forest and to communicate more mm. clearly with you but when when the, the rich annoying people do it it's either i'm toy between it's either like the limitless drug <laughs> oh yeah it or smart, it's yeah. literally just a high yeah. Yeah. i like it just being a high yeah because yeah, you're not you're not in the forest you don't have that connection with it so instead of creating that connection you just get a high but it's yeah. like it's it's monumentally valuable this high it's like yeah it's so maybe, maybe it's just like we it's... just pull the the lovecraft card and say like it's hard to describe if you haven't done it but it's like mm-hmm. exquisitely oh, yeah. valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there might be like a you know a lobster from boston dynamic it's valuable because because it's hard to get. Yeah, yeah, that's also true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's not even a particularly good high. It's just because it's rare. It's the commodification of it. It's a fashion yeah, thing. Yeah, for sure. Yep. But then it's also addictive, so it is dangerous. Oh, yeah, once you've had one. Oh, yeah, it's very addictive. Another. And once you've started doing it, if you go into the forest with it in your system, you are in trouble. Yeah. She'll know, yeah. <laughs> She'll know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I gendered the, the forest guy. Oh, yeah. It's just I, a I tree. Think. Come no, on, guys. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. a tree. <laughs> Trees don't have gender. Trees do. Trees That's actually a huge gender. problem. Yeah. Oh because my god! People yeah. keep planting male trees it only. Is. Yeah. Or I guess they've got issue. sex. They don't have. Yeah, I don't think gender. They... But yeah, still, this is true. This is true. no. Actually, you know what? Trees have specific roles within our society, <laughs> and if they don't meet them, um, how, how have I okay. got this far in life and uh, not known that trees have sex? As in, like they have a sex. I did not yeah. know that. That's insane. Cool. Um. Basically, every multicellular organism has the thing is the thing is Lukey I know that gender I know, yeah <laughs> somehow <laughs> I do <didn't know laughs> the trees have a sex wow okay right yep what is your dice number Matt my dice number is very on brand it is a one easiest number to count to uh hell yes what style of music influences the <gasps> attitude uh, of this oh, world oh Matthew uh, yes. oh my lord Matt is the musical one yeah. among what us what style Can you give tell? me the question again what style of music influences Influences. the attitude of this world so that means that like you know when we look at like the uh landscapes from heavy metal yeah, magazine I or see. something like that is mm-hmm. metal you know that sort of mm-hmm. thing i feel you yeah and i feel it's too easy to go for just okay right i think i know it's too easy to go for like so straight punk because i think that's kind of implicit anyway i also think like metal is awesome but it's i'm gonna go for like psychedelia like your 60s psychedelia really trippy album covers disraeli gears yeah Uh, yeah literally i am willing to send you all the album artwork you guys need if you need to understand this for when we play but (laughs) let me tell you it is it is an interesting visual style yes soft shapes bright colors i love psychedelia i love it Well, then, Helen, we're on to you. I got a three. A three. Uh, What do people consider the most dangerous place in this world? Oh. (laughs) Uh, I feel like it's a bit too obvious. Actually, no, it's a bit too obvious to say the banyan. Banyan tree. Because Mm -hmm. there are people who worship the banyan and consider the banyan to be a safe space. Yeah, you can always give up an eye. If, like, worst comes to worst, and you're in there, you can try to appease the banyan tree. Yeah. I think the most dangerous place sitting next to me at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't pass the salt. That is I mean, that's kind of accurate, honestly. Yeah. The most dangerous place is in the quarry that used to be the heart of the god of the granite. Oh, oh, nice. oh yes. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. Of course. Genius. Thank you, Helen. What happens there? Nobody knows. No one's ever come you don't back. don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you would make it concrete and make it understandable. We can't. Then we're not comprehend. talking about concrete. We're talking about granite. <laughs> oh, right. <there> <laughs> Well, there you go. You have this cool fantasy setting with a sous
of punk. Yay! Uh, I love it. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yes. me too. Awesome. Yes, thank you ever so much. Thank this you yes. so thank much. This has been amazing. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you for doing this. And just so listeners to this know, uh, the Ultimate RPG Game Master's World Building Guide is available now. And this was just, well, I mean, it wasn't just one. <laughs> it was one and a half <laughs> of the exercises <laughs> out of this book. Uh, you can see the results they speak for themselves uh, what a cool dynamic little kingdom of very low power but extremely like far felt gods yeah <laughs> yes you should listeners go and buy the book then you too can create an insane catalog <laughs> <laughs> I've had so much fun yeah. yes we'll be including many a link yeah. so many links you won't know what to do with all these links you'll be tired of links And that's that. We've created a whole new world complete with some bonkers gods and psychedelic punk. Join us next week as we celebrate our one year anniversary. That's right, Diacast has been putting out content for a whole Gregorian calendar year and we're super excited to celebrate with a special game, no spoilers, starting next week. But until then, thank you for listening to Diacast. If you'd like to keep up to date with episodes and announcements, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Diacast and on Instagram at DiacastPod and subscribe to us on your favourite podcatcher. And hey, if you enjoyed listening to us, maybe consider giving us a rating or review or sharing us with a friend. We'd really love that. You can also now support us on Patreon and we would absolutely love it if you'd consider giving us just a few pounds a month. Go to patreon.com forward slash diecast to check out the tiers and rewards available. Diecast is Lukey Slynn, Matt George Lovett, Jacob War, Helen, Peter Wellman and H. Folkmans. Our logo and banner art are by H. Folkmans. The Diecast theme and the world building variation are composed and performed by Matt George Lovett. This episode was edited by Helen. This week we were joined by James D'Amato, host of the One Shot Podcast, Campaign Skyjack Podcast, and the president of the One Shot Podcast Network. We were playing Pantheon and prompts for a punk setting from James's new book, The Ultimate RPG Game Master's World Building Guide, a link to which can be found in the episode description. And at least for this week, that's how the dire cast. Mm-hmm.